In this video, we will talk about the definition of a derivative. So there's two forms of the definition of a derivative that we'll see. In this first one, we're going to be taking a limit as h goes to 0. So I want to motivate this with a picture. So let me draw some axes. And now I'm going to draw a graph here. So let's say my graph looks something like this. And on the graph, I'm going to draw some x value. I'll just call it x. And at that x value, I'm going to label this point. So let's say this is the graph of some function y equals f of x. So that point would be x comma, its y coordinate would be f of x. And my goal is going to be to try to find the slope of the tangent line here to get an exact formula for the slope of the tangent line. So using our idea from previous sections, what we can do is we can find a nearby point. So I'm going to call this nearby point x plus h, so x plus a, a small amount. And I'm going to draw a point there. So the coordinates of this point are going to be x plus h for the x coordinate. The y coordinate will be f of x plus h. And now I'm going to connect them with a secant line. So a secant line is a straight line, whoops, straight line connecting two points on a graph. So that would look something like this. So that is a secant line. And remember that our idea from before was if I wanted to get the slope of the tangent line, the secant line isn't perfect, it's just an approximation. The tangent line needs to represent how steep the graph is right at x. So our idea is going to be to move this point x plus h closer and closer and closer to x. And as we do that, it'll sort of give us a line that looks like this. I'm drawing a line that's kind of matching how steep the graph seems to be right at x. And this is the tangent line. So now let's write a formula for its slope. And this is what's known as the definition of the derivative. The definition of the deriv oops, the deriv derivative. All right, so I'm going to introduce some notation. I'm going to write f, this apostrophe, and then x. This is the derivative of the function f at x. And the derivative is going to represent the slope of that tangent line. So for the slope of the tangent line, I'm going to first write the slope of the secant line, which would be, if I do uh, change in y over change in x, it's going to be f of x plus h minus f of x. I'm subtracting the y values. And now subtract the x values on the bottom. So x plus h minus x. Okay, but right now that's the slope of the secant line. If I want to make it be the slope of this tangent line exactly, I need to take a limit. I'm going to let the limit as h goes to 0. All right, and I can simplify this. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. All right, so this is, this is called the derivative, the derivative of f of x. And our notation for it is, it's going to be written as f, this apostrophe and then x. In words, I say f prime of x. Or the other way it's sometimes written is we write df dx. Uh, that just kind of resembles like a change in my function over the change in x. Like it kind of re resembles a slope formula. That's what's motivating that notation. All right, so this is the definition of the derivative. Okay, so next I want to state some key facts about, well, what, what does this, you know, represent? So let's write some key facts about that derivative. So f prime of x equals the slope of the tangent line, slope of the tangent line to our function at the point x comma f of x. So graphically that's what the derivative represents. 
On a conceptual level, remember the slope of the tangent line was the instantaneous rate of change. So the derivative is representing the instantaneous rate of change. Sometimes to abbreviate that, I will write I R O C for instantaneous rate of change of my function at at x, whatever that x value is. All right, and just for review, I want to remember, well, what does the slope of the secant line tell me? So the slope of the secant line in general has the form f of b minus f of a over, over b minus a, if I was looking at the interval from a to b. So this, this right here represents the slope of the secant line between the points a comma f of a and b comma f of b. The other thing that the slope of the secant line represents is the average rate of change. So average rate of change. Sometimes we'll, I'll abbreviate that as AROC. And this is on the interval from A to B. All right, so I'm going to box these, these key facts. Next, let's look at an example. I have this function C of X equals X to the third minus 4X. In part A, let's evaluate its derivative, which is going to represent the slope of the tangent line, using the definition of the derivative. Okay, so I'm going to use my notation, C prime of X for the derivative. So it's going to be that limit as H approaches zero of C of X plus H minus C of X all over H. So that's my definition of the derivative. Now let's start to plug in. We have the limit as H approaches zero so C of X plus H, whatever's in the parentheses, in this case it's X plus H, that's what I have to plug in for my variable in this function. So wherever the X is, I have to plug in X plus H. So that gives me X plus H cubed minus four times X plus H. Okay, and then we're gonna have minus C of X. So C of X is this whole thing. So I gotta make sure I put a parentheses around all of that. X cubed minus four X. So I remember that I need to subtract all of that and distribute this negative sign. So we have that all over H. Okay, so we have this limit as H approaches zero. So with the X plus H cubed, what we can do is expand this. So what I, what I mean by expand is just multiply it out. X, X plus H cubed means X plus H times x plus h times x plus h. So we could uh, multiply the first x plus h times the second x plus h first, and then distribute that to the next x plus h. If you do that, I'm going to skip those steps. It's maybe just two steps of algebra. What you end up with is x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. All right, so if I write that out here on my numerator, we will have x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus that h cubed. I can also distribute that negative 4 to get minus 4x minus 4h. We can also distribute this other negative sign to get minus x cubed plus 4x. So we have this all over h. And maybe earlier it would have been nice for, for me to highlight which parts were the same. So C of X plus H, that was the same. That was all of this. That was what C of X plus H was. And then we subtracted C of X from it. And C of X was this portion. All right. So we have the limit as H approaches zero. And now let's simplify. So the X cubes are going to cancel. This X cube cancels with that one. And this minus 4x cancels with that, plus 4x. Now, if I look at all the terms that are left in the numerator, whoops, this should be h cubed, let's write that better, h cubed. 
they all have an H in them. Let's factor that H out. Doing that, what I'm left with is 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared and then minus 4 all over that h on the denominator. Now those h's cancel and after I cancel them we can go ahead and plug in a 0 for the h that gives us 3x squared and then I'll get plus 0 plus 0. Uh, let's actually write it out 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared minus 4. And that simplifies to 3x squared minus 4. So thus, I'll put an implication arrow. My derivative c prime of x equals 3x squared minus 4. So later, we are going to learn a shortcut for doing the derivative. That'll be a lot faster than this. But it'll turn out that that shortcut is true because it comes from this. It can be shown using this definition of the derivative. So it's important to understand this definition of a derivative and be able to apply it as we did in this example. So let's show now what we can do with this. So we have this as our derivative. Let's use this to write down the slopes of some tangent lines the slopes of some tangent lines. I'm going to make a table. I'll keep track of x and I'll keep track of my derivative because my derivative represents the slope of the tangent line. And I'm going to plug in some numbers. I'll plug in 0 for the x. That'll give me 3 times 0 squared minus 4, which is negative 4. That's telling me, okay, when x equals 0 on the graph, the slope of my tangent line should be negative 4. In fact, if I draw the graph of c of x, my function, my original function, and I draw some axes. I've gone ahead and graphed this ahead of time, and it turns out that the graph, I'm gonna draw a tick mark at two, a tick mark at negative two, it turns out that the graph does this sort of thing. It has x-intercept at negative two, and then an x-intercept at zero, and then another x-intercept at positive two. So x-intercepts at negative two, zero, and positive two, and it has this sort of shape, and based off of my graph, if I draw the tangent line at x equals 0, remember the tangent line should be a line whose steepness matches how steep my graph appears to be right at this point. So that's going to be something like, something like this. That is going to be my tangent line at x equals 0. And it seems reasonable that that could be something like negative 4. This does have a negative slope. So next, I want to graph my derivative and just show, well, why does it make sense that my derivative graph has the shape that it does based off of what I know about this tangent line and what it looks like. So this derivative, I think, is actually easier to graph. 3x squared minus 4, that's a quadratic. So its shape is going to be a parabola. Because the 3, this leading coefficient, is positive. It's going to be an upward-facing parabola. So something like this, upward-facing. And the y-intercept of this, if I plug in x equals 0, is going to be negative 4. Okay, so it turns out that parabola has this sort of shape, where this bottom point here is at 0, negative 4. So at 0, negative 4. So on this graph, c prime of 0, when I plug 0 into it, equals negative 4. So the y value at this point is telling me what the slope of the tangent line should be in my original function's graph. And it definitely seems like that tangent line could have a negative slope, and that's matching what I'm seeing here in my derivative graph, because this y value, the output of the derivative, is negative 4. All right, so let's go back to the table. Let's try a couple of other values for x and see that the original graph and the derivative graph sort of match what we expect. So next I'm going to plug in 2 over root 3, which might seem a little bit weird, but it'll turn out <laughs> there's a reason I'm picking it. If I plug that into my function, we will get 3 times, and then I square that number. And that gives me 4 thirds, and then minus 4. So the 3's are going to cancel, and I'll get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So that's telling me when x is 2 over root 3, it's some positive number, the slope of the tangent line needs to be 0. And looking at my graph, it seems like where the tangent line is 0, sorry, slope is 0, 
is here, this bottom point, it gets perfectly flat. The steepness of my curve is perfectly flat. So this right here. All right, so that right there, that is gonna be our tangent line at x equals two over root three. So that means this x value should be two over root three. So if I go to my graph of the derivative, when we plugged 2 over root 3 into this, that made the output be 0. That means that's this x-intercept. This is 2 root 3, sorry, 2 over root 3, comma 0. So that output, that y value, 0, is telling me what the slope of the tangent line should be in the original graph. All right, let's do this for one other value. So in my table, let's also plug in x equals 3. Okay, so something passed 2. Okay, and if I plug that into the derivative, whoops, here's the derivative, we'll get 3 times 3 squared minus 4. 3 times 3 squared, that's 27, minus 4 is 23. So if I go to the graph of my function, where x is 3, if I draw that point on the graph, and I draw the slope of the tangent line, sorry, if I draw the, if I draw the tangent line, the tangent line looks something like this. This is the tangent line at x equals 3. It definitely seems like the slope of that should be positive. In fact, really positive, really big, because this seems like it's pretty, uh, pretty steep. Okay, and if I match that with what's going on in the derivative graph, if I were to plug in 3 into this derivative graph, which is maybe somewhere over here, the y value, if I were to continue drawing my curve, if I were to continue drawing the curve up here, it's saying that this point should be 3 comma 23. So that output, 23, is, is the slope of the tangent line on the original graph when x equals 3. Alrighty, so let's do another part of this example. Let's find the equation of the tangent line at the point 3 comma c of 3. To find the equation of any line, we need two things. I need if I were to use y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form, I would need the slope and the y-intercept. But usually, most of the time, it's easier to find a point and the slope and use point-slope form for the equation of a line. In fact, a point, a point might be quicker. We know the x value is 3. And to get the y value, I'm going to plug 3 into my original equation, x cubed minus 4x. So that'll give me 3 cubed minus 4 times 3, so 27 minus 12, which is 15. Okay, and for my slope, I need to plug in 3 into uh, the derivative. Okay, because I want the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3. So my derivative is 3x squared minus 4. I'll get 3 times 3 squared minus 4, which we already worked out, that was 23. So our equation now, in point slope form, the general equation is y minus y1 equals m, my slope, times x minus x1, where x1 comma y1 is a point on our line. Okay, so I'm going to do y minus, my y coordinate of the point was 15, my slope was 23. And then I get x minus my x-coordinate was 3. And that's my equation. It's totally fine to leave it like this. If you wanted to put it in y equals mx plus b form, you'd have to isolate the y. So to do that, we'd get y minus 15 equals, and if I distribute 23, we get 23x minus 69. And then if I add 15, we get y equals 23x minus 54. So it would also be okay to leave it like that, but it's definitely fine to leave it in point-slope form. 